uh, as you know, I edit the stories that I relate here. So I do have to read them. This is called a designated driver story. I would like to share an experience with you about drinking and driving. As you well know, some of us have been lucky not to have brushes with the authorities on our way home from the various social sessions we've attended over the years. A couple of nights ago, I was out for a few drinks with some friends and had a few too many beers and then topped it off the evening with a margarita. Not a good idea. <laughs> Knowing full well I was at least slightly over the limit, I did something I've never done before. I took a taxi home. <laughs> sure enough, a police roadblock was set up on the route home. But because of it being a taxi, it was waved through. I arrived home safely, without incident. A pleasant surprise. I've never driven a taxi before. <laughs> and I'm not sure where I got it. <laughs> this, one, this one came by telephone from Bill Ely. And he sort of insisted that I relate this, and he said I can keep it. I didn't know. A young, quite virtuous couple were planning their attendance at the upcoming senior prom when the young female told her boyfriend she wanted to follow up the prom by going somewhere private to make love. The young fellow was both flabbergasted and very concerned about his total lack of how to accomplish this, her request but then decided to ask the town pharmacist for advice. At the pharmacy, he waited for a time near closing when no other customers were present, approached the pharmacist, and explained his dilemma. The pharmacist was most accommodating with understanding and excellent advice. On the evening of the prom, the young man was invited to meet her parents and share their evening meal. The girlfriend's mother asked him to say grace, which he did at some length all the time with his head bowed. Following his words of grace, he continued to sit with head bowed. Finally, his girlfriend leaned over and whispered to him, I didn't know the depth of your religious feelings. He whispered his reply, I didn't know your father is the pharmacist. <laughs> story, but this is what USA's problems are all about. A cowboy named Bud was overseeing his herd in a remote mountainous pasture in Montana <coughs> when suddenly a brand new BMW advanced toward him out of a cloud of dust. The driver, a young man in a Brioni uh, suit, Gucci shoes, Ray-Ban sunglasses, and Yves Saint Laurent tight, leaned out the window and asked the cowboy, if I tell you exactly how many cows and calves you have in your herd, will you give me a calf? Bud looks at the man, obviously a yuppie, then looks at his peacefully grazing herd and calmly answers, sure, why not? The yuppie parks his car, whips out his Dell notebook computer, connects it to his singular Razor V3 cell phone, and serves to a NASA page on the internet where he calls up a GPS satellite to get an exact fix on the location, which he then feeds to another NASA satellite that scans the area in ultra-high resolution photo. The young man then opens the digital photo in Adobe Photoshop, exports it to an image processing facility in Hamburg, Germany. <laughs> Within seconds, he receives an email on his Palm Pilot that the image has been processed and the data stored. He then accesses an MS SQL database through an ODBC connected Excel spreadsheet with email on his Blackberry, and after a few minutes, receives a response. Finally, he prints out a full color, 150 page report on his high tech, miniaturized HP laser jet printer, turns to the cowboy and says, You have exactly 1,586 cows and calves. That's right. 
Well, I guess you can take one of my calves. He watches the young man select one of the animals and look, walk, looks out with amusement as the young man stuffs it into the trunk of his car. <laughs> then Bud says to the young man, Hey, if I can tell you exactly what your business is, will you give me back my calf? The young man thinks about it for an instant and says, Okay, why not? You're a congressman for the U.S. government, <laughs> says Bud. Wow! That's correct. How did you guess that? No guessing required, answered the cowboy. You showed up here even though nobody called you. You want to get paid for an answer I already knew to a question I never asked. You used millions of dollars worth of equipment trying to show me how much smarter than me you are and you don't know a thing about how working people make a living or about animals for that matter. This is a herd of sheep. <laughs> now give me back my dog. Denver is annual physical. His wife goes with her. As they go into the examination room, the doctor says, uh, I'm going to need a urine specimen and a stool sample. The guy is quite hard of hearing and he Turns to his wife and says, what did he say? And she said, he wants your underwear. <laughs> city girl named Amy marries a Missouri farmer. One morning on his way out to check on the cows, the rancher says to Amy, the insemination man is coming over to impregnate one of our cows today. So I drove a nail into the two by four just above where the cow stall is in the barn. Please show him where the cow is when he gets here. After a while, the artificial insemination man arrives and knocks on the front door. Amy takes him down to the barn. They walk along the row of cows, and when Amy sees the nail, she tells him, this is the one right here. The man assumes he is dealing with an airhead blonde, asks, tell me, lady, because I'm dying to know, how would you know that this is the right cow to breed bread? That's simple, she said, by the nail that's over its stall, she explains. Laughing rudely at her, the man says, and what, pray tell, is the nail for? The blonde turns to walk away and says sweetly over her shoulder, I guess it's to hang your pants on. <laughs> Bird is always right there, a good story. 